And the first submitted main topic today got sent in to us from Crazy Joe, who wrote, John, we keep reading uh, things like Peacock is paying $100 million per year for the streaming rights to The Office, or HBO Max is paying big bucks for the streaming rights to Friends, and Big Bang Theory. How can this be? HBO Max's parent company, Warner Brothers, owns both shows. NBC Universal owns The Office. Who are they paying these hundreds of millions of dollars in payments to? Themselves? All right, thanks a lot for sending that in, Crazy Joe. And you know what? It's a totally valid, valid question. You know, when we hear that, oh, this new streaming service just paid $100 million to have the rights to this show, which is already owned by their own parent company. And we've been seeing that playing itself out in a step and repeat sort of fashion. So the question becomes, who are they paying? The, there are, every situation is unique. And Rob, I'm gonna to wanna to get your, your thought on yeah. this here too. Every situation is unique, but it seems to me like, how would you define it to people, Rob? How would you answer this? Well, here's the thing. It, you have to understand that television shows, especially television shows that have lasted a long time, are very, very lucrative for everybody that was involved in making those shows. The cast, the producers, the creators, the writers. And there's been a lot of, The X-Files was famously in a big lawsuit because Fox was basically dealing to themselves. And they were they were giving their other affiliates or their other, other Fox companies, they were giving a better deal to get like The X-Files to play on their own networks. And they got sued. The creators of The X-Files, Chris Carter, uh, uh, Dave Duchovny, Jillian Anderson were in lawsuits because they weren't getting... Because their residuals were based on whatever those dollar sales were. Ab absolutely. So what they're paying for a series like this, and you see how valuable they are, the fact that somebody's going to pay $100 million, the creators and the, the actors of these shows get a lot of money. They get a lot of money. So they're not just... It's not just the studio that owns these things. They have many partners. And those partners expect to be paid. And that's why these fees are so exorbitantly high is because that's what the market uh, will bear based on what everybody who's involved with the creation of these shows is owed. So it's not just – it's not – they're not – they're not just selling to themselves. They're selling to – think of them as partners. They're in partnership with the actors, with all the talent that made these shows. So they're paying – I don't know. I have no idea what the deals are. But – I wouldn't be surprised if it's more than half they're paying out to these other people. And it's worth it. It's worth it with the views that they're going to get to pay that much money to these. I mean, think about it. TV shows are played out. It's not like every TV show gets this kind of money. No, no. it's probably 10 in the history of television. Uh, and it's it's and there's a window of time. Like, no one's paying this much money for MASH. You know, or the honeymooners from the or the Twilight Zone, but these shows are still very, very popular. People grew up with these shows; they still have an incredible value. And so, for things like The Office or Seinfeld or Friends, the value is still there. And the people that worked on those shows, you know, Jennifer Aniston's got haircuts to maintain. And uh, <laughs> let me tell you, <laughs> she's gonna get some big cheddar from these deals. Yeah, and, and God look, love her. Th this is the main thing that I think people need to understand too is that when you're owned by the same parent company, that doesn't mean you know left hand is Peter, right hand is Paul. It, it doesn't really mean that. Sometimes it plays out like that, and when they do, like Rob astutely pointed out, you get the Fox situation that got them in hot water. Basically, it's functioned like this: I worked for a, a large corporation once, and my company was owned by that corporation. That corporation had other entities as well. And when we as one body, we have our own budget and our budget has nothing to do with the budgets of the other companies owned by our parent company, right? We have our budget, we have our income, we have our expenses. The other company that's under the same umbrella, they have their own budget with their own income and their own uh, expenses and stuff like that. So when we needed to have something from one of the other companies, we didn't just get it for free because we're all under the same umbrella company. No, that company's got to account for what they did and what income they get. We have to account for how we're spending our money. So we literally had to spend, even though we were owned by the same company, we had to spend our money budget to purchase something from one of the other companies that was under the same umbrella because they need to show the revenue and we need to show what we did with our budget. 
And as Rob pointed out, where that becomes really important, particularly in these television entertainment deals, is other people have their residual checks, their money dependent on what types of transactions happen there. So there are laws requiring those to all be above board. So when you're asking the question, how can you know these companies, like an NBC Universal that's owned by the same company, we've got the streaming service, we got the rights holder of the show, they're all under the same company. Because you still got to justify selling those rights and getting the revenue if you're this company. And you got to show what you're doing with your budget if you're this company. They really do have to act and operate independently in order to do things all above board and all that kind of stuff for that to work. So I know it looks a little confusing, but that's basically how that all works. Rob, would you add anything to that? No, I think that's, I think that's pretty good. I mean, I, I was trying to explain the other day to somebody how every single movie that gets made, and this is true of a television show too, is its own company. Yeah, they create their own limited LLC. Yeah, they yeah. started an LLC, and everything is based and made under that. And, it, it's, and then somebody buys that movie buys that LLC and absorbs it. It's it's all moving money around, but there are part the people that own these shows, these shows are owned by by the participants. They're all participants. And as you as a show gets more and more successful, people get more and more ownership. The cast gets more and more money every year. Their deals get renegotiated and so there's a lot of people making money off these kinds of of, of shows and that's so it's it, and the th- more money there is, the more accountability there has to Absolutely. be because there's going to be more scrutiny. So you got to do things above board. All right.